we're looking at encounters. Encounters that Jesus had with normal everyday people and seeing how those encounters changed and challenged and maybe sometimes defied expectations. And some of them come in the nature of a prayer. A prayer is just simply when you bring your requests to God. And when Jesus was walking on the earth and people brought requests to him, he was standing at the very least in the place of God. You know, I forgive your sins. I cleanse, heal, restore. He's doing the work of God. I must do the work of my father while it is yet light. So he stands in the place of God. Wonderful, wonderful. So they they bring their prayers to him, like his mother saying, they have no wine. It's just a simple prayer request. Some of them were not so simple. Some of them were more complex and, and layered, layered. But Anne Lamott, wonderful writer, she said, basically, there's only three kinds of prayer. There is help, thanks and wow. All prayer can be can be categorised by one of those interjections. Help, prayer for a request for aid. Thanks, uh, the establishment of gratitude. And wow, the expression of wonder. And, um, well, let's just see. Have a look at this one. Here we go. Matthew, Matthew 8. Matthew, Matthew 8. When Jesus had come down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And there was a leper who came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. If you choose, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I do choose. Be made clean. Be made clean. That's one word in the Greek and in the Aramaic original. Immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. Then Jesus said to him, see that you say nothing to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them, as a, as a sign. Show, show what's happened. Show what's happened. Declare it to, to them, not to everybody. Don't gossip about it. Just be about your business. Show it to them. <laughs> Now, that meant some very significant things. But let me start by just saying, I wonder if you've come across this, this psychological pattern called imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome means everybody else deserves a seat at the table here except me. If they knew me, they would kick me out. I am not, I am not welcome here. I shouldn't be here. I'm an imposter. In a sort of a way, I think that the leper felt like that for, for three very, very strong reasons. The, the, the first one was, of course, the nature of his illness. He was a leper. He was ritually unclean. He was physically offensive. It was against the law for him to be where he was. It was serious business he had to maintain a social distance he was some forms of leprosy were highly contagious and so it was written into the law you cannot come into the public thoroughfare okay so that was the first reason why he might feel just a little bit just just a little bit of an imposter i shouldn't be here nobody wants me here okay and second there were great crowds following Jesus great crowds and he must have been tempted to think that everybody else deserved to claim Jesus's time except him I know these reasons run in together don't they but there's great crowds around he shouldn't be there anyway but knowing what he knows about himself so sooner or later somebody's going to ask me to leave it's like being at a party and in dirty clothes. Jesus even told a story about that, didn't he? About being at a wedding. Why did you come in with those clothes? You know, you're not welcome here. And that's the third reason. The third reason is a bit more poignant and personal. 
And that is that because of his disease, because of where he was with the great crowds, he believed in his heart that Jesus would turn him away. If you will, if you choose, you can make me clean, but I'm not sure that you will choose. That's the implication, isn't it? So Jesus comes against all three reasons in, in a flood of compassion, in a, in a wonderful expression of love. He stretches out his hand to touch. He stretches out. First, he isolates the man. It's, it's me and you. It's him and the man. And, and forget about the great crowds following. They're following, but you and I are here now. Amen. That's how God comes to us. Personally, relationally. Just me and you. Here we go. That's why Jesus said, when you pray, go into your inner room because the God who hears you in secret will reward you in secret. Don't, don't worry about anybody else. You just get alone with me. Come, come up, come away with me just for a little while. OK, and then he he comes against the. The, the, the leprosy, he stretches out and touches and he comes against the threat of contagion the threat of plague he comes against the fear of being infected by the disease he stretches out and touches and then the third way he he says i choose he just <laughs> puts it puts it out there he said i am willing i am willing it's a wonderful picture isn't it of how god deals with us i am willing I am willing, I choose, I, I, I just isolate you. It's you and me. Forget the crowds. I touch you. It's I'm not afraid of a disease. The disease is afraid of me. I will. And then he says this wonderful, wonderful word. Be thou made clean. Okay, it's, it's poignant and wonderful. And it's the, do you know what? I know what that guy, that guy felt the total opposite of those L'Oreal ads, you know, so be, because I'm worth it, because I'm worth it. So he felt he wasn't worth it. And Jesus says, yes, yes, you are. He stretches out his hand. He touches him and he does the inconceivable. And he he always welcomed faith. He always pointed it out. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, you know, your faith has made you well. So he saw this man's faith. He saw his drive, his push, and he comes to him. And then he deals with it very, very straightforwardly. You know, OK, you know, faith pleases God. It's impossible to please God without faith. Hebrew, Hebrews 11. But once you've got the faith to come to me, I, he's going to respond. He's going to respond. Your faith has 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 made you well but he recognized the help the guy was saying help 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 i need you and he comes across the obstacles again that's what faith does it it it, it leapfrogs over obstacles and jesus responds to it jesus takes us seriously and his healing is always more than skin deep leprosy Yes, but, but what about social connectivity? What about the great crowds that you're not part of? You, you can be, you can be. What about the covenant community that you're not part of? You can be, you can be. So he says, OK, now show yourself to the priests. They had a great long ritual about this. Leviticus 13 and 14. Probably one of your favourite verses, is it? The infectious disease stuff, you know. So... He brings him into the community and then he offers him legitimacy. You, 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 there is a way back for you. There's a way back because I've welcomed you, because I've stretched out and touched you, because I'm willing that you might be made clean. OK, and now we proceed. Now we proceed. This is now this is day one. This is day one 
Amen. <laughs> he, come, he comes into our lives like this. This is day one. I am willing. I am willing. Be restored. He speaks to the addict. He speaks to the prisoner. He speaks to the outcast. He speaks to the lonely. He speaks to the somebody just looking in a mirror and feeling crap about themselves. He speaks to them. I will. I will. And he stretches out and touches and restores and restores and he what happens next is going to be up to us how we respond how we walk with him okay but he sees our faith and he's ready to give he's looking for us to say help help the cry of faith god bless you today